Welcome to the Haunting, Unearthly, and Paranormal Stories podcast. Each week will be a different event, whether paranormal or some other strange and unexplained happening. Maybe even a haunting located near you will be examined and relayed to you. These events and stories are based on events and have been given to us by the people who experience these events in their own lives. These weekly journeys we take together will lead us down deserted roads, into the deep and dark forests, and through the doors of buildings we should not enter. Pull up a chair and join me as we take a step into the unknown, here on the Haunting, Unearthly, and Paranormal Stories podcast. Just remember, believe those that you choose, or believe in none. It is your choice. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's up? Do you struggle finding a t-shirt that fits, as well as the one t-shirt that you have in your wardrobe that you love until it finally wore out? Do you wish that that standard medium was just a little bit longer? Or for me, that extra large didn't have to be a 2X to get the length. Guess what? We got this taken care of, and you've got to check out Coulter Dillon. They've mastered the perfect fit. They've added fabric color options and personalized artwork to deliver the perfect fitting t-shirt. Forget those pre-done t-shirts that every size doesn't fit anyone. They have custom fitted t-shirts today and you can save 50% off. That's right. 50% off by using our tech time radio code. Use the code tech 50 at colterdillon.com to get this special offer. Again, that's C-O-L-T-E-R-D-I-L-L-O-N.com to get the perfect fitted t-shirt. Make sure to use that code TECH50, that's T-E-C-H-50, for 50% off your first order. Broadcasting across the nation, from the East Coast to the West, keeping you up to date on technology while enjoying a little whiskey on the side. With leading edge topics, along with special guests, to navigate technology in a segmented, stylized radio program. The information that will make you go, hmm. Pull up a seat, raise a glass with our hosts as we spend the next hour talking about technology for the common person. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. Welcome to Tech Time with Nathan Mum, the show that makes you go, mmm, technology news of the week, the show for the common everyday person talking about technology, broadcasting across the nation with insightful segments on subjects weeks ahead of the mainstream media. Welcome our radio audience of 35 million listeners to an hour of insightful technology with a little bit of whiskey on the side. I'm Nathan Mum, and welcome to our show as we live stream during our show on five of the most popular platforms, including YouTube, Twitch.tv, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. We encourage you to watch us live or visit us at techtimeradio.com and tweet us at hashtag techtimeradio during the show. And we'll do our best to respond to all your questions and answers as we can as soon as possible. Now, I'm the host of the technology with over 30 years expertise working for companies like Microsoft and Vulcan Inc. and a keynote speaker on technology subjects from cybersecurity to blockchain and everything in between. My co-host here, Mike Gorday, is an award-winning author. Originally from Arizona, he's a human behavior expert living in Seattle area with a master's degree in forensic psychology with 20 plus year career helping people understand human behavior so they can make better decisions. Mike keeps me from geeking out while providing an insight into human behavior and how it interacts with technology and everyday people. We are two friends that come from a different background but bring our best technology show possible every week for our family, friends, and fans to enjoy. Mr. Gorday, how are you doing today? Peachy. We're doing peachy. peachy. Okay. Peachy. But we don't have any peachy whiskey, but, yeah, we, but we do have some whiskey that I, we're going to be I'm talking really about. I'm really looking forward to drinking out of this plastic bottle that you brought up. Well, there. hang on. Don't get too excited here now for new people that are listening. They don't know what's going on, but we do drink whiskey on the side. But before we do any of that, we're going to have to officially start our show. So, Odie, That's let's right. get ready to start today's show. Now on today's show... The snap from the Academy Awards. We're going to talk about S N A P, not slap, what? but snap. We're going not to talk the about slap? no. We're going to talk about snap from the Academy Awards, and why teenage social media usage is being linked to less real life satisfaction. And yes, this week we have drones now delivering uh, items available in Texas. Then we look at what triggers people to go from zero to sixty and angry. 
uh, issues with our mesmerizing moment. I don't know where we got that is idea it, from. I don't know. Does that have anything to do with the slap? That's not the snap. Well, that's the, it may be. So we're gonna I, we're, your your subject today is to tell us what is that trigger point that has people go from zero to sixty. Well, I did write about it today on my on my actual my. I posted it on my website. On your website? Are we going to share it out on Tech Time Radio? We can do that. We can, we can absolutely do that. But I, I, I can talk a little bit about what that might have been. Okay, perfect. Then we're going to have a subject, of course, Protect Yourself Today is our main feature. Uh, we've got tons of stories. we got cyber breaches that are happening across the nation, so we're going to talk about that. Then we're going to follow up with stories you didn't know. And in addition to that, of course, we have our This Week in Technology, Mike's Mesmerizing Moment, and of course, our pick of the day, Whiskey Tasting. So sit back, raise a glass, and welcome to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. Now it's time to start our show with our loaded question of the week brought to you by Elderberry Boost. Get your Elderberry Boost today at elderberry-boost.com. Mike and Odie, here's your loaded question. What is something you want to learn how to do and why? You're up first, Mike. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, dang it. <laughs> uh, what is something I want to learn how to do and why? Um, I don't know. I, I, I like learning new languages. That's Okay, so, you're gonna, so you're learning, do you know Jap, J- Japanese? I know some Japanese. Okay. I know some sign language. Okay. Uh, I know one sign language. I, I bet you do. <laughs> when I'm driving down the road. I, yeah, I, that's, I, I, that's the universal <laughs> sign language right there. Okay, <laughs> all right. Uh, any other languages that you're working on? Do you know Spanish? Uh, I did start working on French. Je ne comprends uh, français? That was not French. Je ne comprends français. It is French. Is that what that is? Yeah. Okay. Just, do yeah. you speak French? I don't. Oh. I said I started. Okay. All right. There you go. <laughs> okay. All right. Odie, question to you. Um. Yeah, I'd like to learn a language. You like to learn a language too? Yeah. Oh, wow. What, 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 Either what, French or Chinese. French well, I was going to say stick shift, but... That's kind of dying. Uh, no. there, I got so, a stick shift. That's the best is, security. That is, that is, yeah. That's the best security system in today's uh, world. I know. Uh, that, you got a stick shift. No one's breaking into your car to no steal No one it. wants to steal your car. Yeah, they don't know how to go from the clutch like, from what first the heck gear is to second thing? gear. Yeah, what's okay, that thing in the middle? I can get it started, and I can start going. But then when I have to like move up speeds, that's where I mess up. Oh, yeah. wow. Well, to, you to, know, I think it's okay uh, just never have a sports car with... An automatic transmission. That's, that's it. that that that's to me awesome. that's to me that's sort sort of a a no no brainer. No brainer. You need uh, to have a stick shift in a sports car. All right. So, uh, so if I was, what is something that you want to learn? Uh, I want to learn how to do a radio show. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, are you serious? No, uh, I, I I do. I actually do. I want to keep on getting better and better. So that's something I'm trying to do all the time. That's why our production I, meetings are essentially 15 minutes of bash you know, Nathan that, and everything that, he does wrong. That would the, be <laughs> the beginning of the sh- Isn't that what they are? That would be that's yeah, yeah whatever. Okay. <laughs> so so I'm trying to that's get better. That's like saying I want to learn how to wake up better every yeah, day and what, go to work. Well, I, I like to wake up better every day. So I don't. Don't say better. Don't say I want to do it. Okay, you're already I doing be- it. That's right. I want to do it better. All right, here we go. All right. Well, my Mike, as always, we have our whiskey tasting <laughs> during the got, commercials. just got schooled. I know. <laughs> to see if your selected whiskey gets zero, one, or two thumbs up on our pick of the day. Make sure you listen all the way through the show to see if you get some interesting facts. I guarantee you today on Mark's Mumbles about our whiskey, you're that, going to hear some interesting yeah. facts that will I help can't. shape our show in yeah. upcoming segments. Yeah, I can't wait. Okay, there we go. Uh, now under our first segment, bringing you the top technology stories. Everyone will be talking about for weeks to come within the first five minutes of the show. Let's get ready to start segment number one. What's happening in the world of technology? This is our top stories in the first five minutes. Story number one. Well, we're still taking baby steps of drone deliveries as essentially Amazon had huge layoffs in this area. Remember, Amazon was going to deliver all these things with packages. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they've laid off a bunch of people. But Google's parent company, the Alphabet Soup uh, company owns Wing Wings, and they have now done their 200th delivery with drones. Understandably, what are they, what are they delivering? Uh, they're delivering packages. A lot of in the European countries that they're doing this, so it's not at state what are they sites. Doing so. in Texas? Well, hang on, we're going to talk about it. Guess oh. what we have now in Texas? There is a new company. Well, it's not a new company, but it's a company that moved from North Carolina and has now moved into Texas. It's called Flytrex. It's an Israel-based company that just announced some expansion, and they're very excited to have up to 10,000 delivery options available for people in Dallas, Fort Worth, metropolitan areas. So let's <laughs> listen to this clip about their new product. Drone delivery is coming to your neighborhood. Simply download the Flytrex app. 
place your order. Keep your eyes on the skies. Delivery has never been cooler. Be the first on your block to order lightning fast takeout. Need it now grocery items or that afternoon cup of joe. Fly tracks. Delivery takes flight. Okay, that. Okay, so hang, on, know, hang, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, I got I got okay. uh, You can hang on just a second. So this is the Fly Tracks app. The company says that food should be delivered to the front or backyard in less than five minutes. But the lemon is the drone's potential range is only one nautical mile. That is all the FAA waiver allows them to deliver. The company says it's working towards a much broader expansion in the United States. Mike, would you pay an extra ten dollars to twenty dollars to have a delivery of your coffee to come from a drone? Wait, uh, no. Like additionally, on yes, top of the- no. yes, no. So it's your no, order. So no. So think of this. It. But look, so think Com- of your coming, order coming from the West myself. Yes. I feel like people will be ordering stuff yeah. just so they can shoot it out of the sky. <laughs> oh, okay. That's so, that. so you're, you're thinking that all these Texan people are going to start ordering stuff to the backyard so they can I, get their I, shotguns I feel, out? Yeah, I feel like there would be a lot of shotgun blasts. <laughs> so this service that right now is available. It started on Monday. And it has a very select group. Then I can get you 10,000 items. So if you want to have di- diapers. I don't know so about here's $40 worth of coffee. So it's a so $24 diapers to be delivered. You have an additional $20 delivery fee. So to get yourself a package of 24 diapers, it's going to be 40 some odd bucks to have this drone go to the backyard or the front yard of your house. I, I feel like this is the ultimate in laziness. The ultimate in laziness? I mean, isn't it easy, easier to order from like DoorDash or one of these delivery well, services that, where you'd only right, have to pay a, a tip of 5 to $6, let alone 10 to $20? Yeah, it's like, hey, go down the street. Go down the corner and get me a coffee. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> or you can actually probably pay someone just to, yeah. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. I, this this is an interesting technological topic. Okay, but, well. You know, in, especially in Texas, you know, because yeah. I'm from Arizona. Okay. Uh, I would think that people would want to, you know, blow them out of the sky. Blow them out of the sky. That would... <laughs> well, you know what they say on all this drone stuff? Mm-hmm. The sky's the limit. Dun, 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 jink. All right, there you go. Okay, remember when you were talking about being a better radio host? Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, all right, all right. Story number two. Are you ready okay. up there? I yeah. think you got story number two. Let's segment that way. Yeah, okay. So uh, teenage uh, social media usage is being ranked to uh, less than real-life satisfaction. So okay. uh, UK study in Nature Communication shows the... More time girls age between 11 and 13 spent on social media, the less likely they are to be satisfied with life a year later, study suggested. Uh, that also had the same pattern for boys aged 14 to 15 and 19-year-old boys and girls. Now, scientists are speculating that the vulnerability to social media at particular ages may be linked to brain, hormonal, and social changes during as- adolescent development, which... You know, that that does make sense. Researchers okay. from the University of Cambridge and Oxford and the Donders Institute for Brain Cognition and Behavior say that social media companies need to share more of their data with scientists to allow further research. So this is kind of the big tech part, all right? So we're talking about, so people are saying they want the companies to disclose data that they have because they have triggered data to hit these social media groups. And people are saying, we want to do studies and we want to have companies release more data. Well, they, yeah, they need that ancillary data to help help them figure out what's going on. So, uh, you know, this particular study was a survey group of seventeen over seventeen thousand people. Okay, that's a pretty so that's pretty that's good sample a size. Huge sample size. Okay, uh, and, but they don't really know what's going on. I mean, psychologically, there there can be any number of reasons. Uh, you know the 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 FOMO f- frenzy. Okay, fear of missing fear out. Fear of missing out. Uh, you know, social media is a veritable cesspool of negativity, which can uh, create some some discrepancies between what people view and what people think of. Okay, there's also there's also the addict effect. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that could be going on. This that's probably what I'm going to little write about it for the this month's newsletter. newsletter. Yeah. Okay. Good. I may, I may put a little bit of a. Uh, uh, Emphasis, Emphasis on the social media, on the media. social media stuff. Okay, so yeah, that's while the they came up with this, they don't know why. Okay, again, this the studies are 
the studies are still unable, which is why they're asking for these these uh, additional things from the social media companies. And I'm going to guess that they probably won't be getting the data they're looking for. So who knows? Okay. All right. Well, story number three, the snap heard around the Oscars. That, you know, it's funny because I just wrote a post about the slap heard around the world. The slap heard around the world? Yeah. Oh, okay. We, we, we must have been just in sync, in sync? With, with our, Where, is that, uh, is that with your our, boy band yeah, reference? In sync. That's right. Okay. <laughs> During ABC's Academy Award broadcast on March 27th, a big snap was heard. Not the slap (laughs) of Will Smith and Chris Rock, but the company that owns Snapchat and Bitmoji aired its first ever Oscar TV spot, honoring the deaf and hard of hearing communities. The ad shows people using Snapchat's augmented reality lens to learn American Sign Language. That kind of opens up what we talked about. You guys said you wanted to learn a new language. Specifically here, Snapchat has a augmented reality lens that allows people to learn the American sign language process with the gestures of the hand. The ad was inspired by the Oscar nomination for Apple's original film Coda, the first motion picture starring a predominantly deaf cast to receive and win best picture. This is also a nod at Netflix audible, which is follows the journey of a Maryland school for the death high athletes for a documented short subject. It would be a high school athlete. High school athlete, sorry. High school athlete for a documented short subject. The Snap 30-second spot shows people using the Snapchat app's augmented reality lens to learn how to finger spell. Last year, Snapchat launched a series of lenses that track hand movements and translate ASL into text. In addition, two 15-second spots ran on digital and social channels following the Oscar ceremony. That's right. That's interesting. So you see, yeah, so there you go. In technology, you know, sometimes we're always beating up on these companies, but Snapchat is developing with their augmented reality, which means you put a goggle on. Mm -hmm. You're not seeing a different reality world itself, but you're in the existing world, and you can actually learn sign language and words that actually put closed captioning over the top of them. Well, Mike, our time is up. We got through the top stories. If you want to learn more, you can always visit us online at techtimeradio.com and click on our episode section or blog to get even more details on these stories and features. Now it's time to get ready for our whiskey tasting at the break. But up next, we have Protect Yourself Today. Join us after the break as we look at cybercrime hacks and information about the darker side of technology. You're listening to Tech Time Radio with Mike, Odie, and myself. We'll see you after the commercial break. Hey, Mike, have you ever heard of Blue Chew? What are you going to ask me, Nathan? Blue Chew essentially is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable form at a fraction of the cost. Tell me more about that. Did you know there are all kinds of reasons guys aren't able to perform age, medical condition, and stress? The chewable for BlueChew.com can help you be able to perform at your best. Blue Chew is an online prescription service, so no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. And it ships right to your door in a discreet package. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com. Consult with one of the licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part? It's all done online. Blue Chew's licensed medical providers work with you to find the right ingredients and strength for your prescription. Don't like swallowing pills? No problem. Blue Chew tablets are chewable. Tablets are made in the USA, good old America, and prepared and shipped direct, so it's cheaper than any pharmacy. And here's a special deal for our listeners with the promo code TECHTIME to receive your first month free with the use of our promo code TECHTIME at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com. That's bluechew.com. Promo code TECHTIME to receive your first month free. And we thank Blue Chew for being a sponsor. Hey, Mike. What? Have you heard of Elderberry? Only in reference to a Monty Python movie. Well, let me tell you, Elderberry Boost. Again, that's elderberry-boost.com. Elderberry Boost. Yes, Mike, that's Elderberry Boost. You can choose Organic Elderberry Boost, that eight-ounce size. It's available on sale right now at eleven ninety nine. But you're listening here right now on Tech Time Radio, so you need to go to Elderberry. That's E L D E R B E R R Y dash Boost dot com and get some today. Elderberry Boost. Elderberry is an all-natural organic immune system booster and antiviral. Elderberry is known to actively fight against viruses, including colds and the flu. It also works as a natural remedy for allergies, cancer, digestion, heart disease, high cholesterol, headache, toothache, weight loss, and reduced inflammation. It's a natural and healthy diuretic and has many antiviral properties. 
While it is famous for fighting the flu, it is effective for any illness. Elderberry Boost was created to provide a quality organic elderberry to their customers. After searching years ago for a perfect elderberry syrup, none could be found, so they essentially created their own homemade recipe. If you would like to get 15% off your first order of Elderberry Boost, just put in the discount code TECHTIME at checkout. Again, that's elderberry-boost.com. Elderberry Boost. All right. Welcome back to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. Tech Time Radio is a weekly hour technology show that talks about current technology in a simple format without having to geek out. Brought to you by myself, Nathan Mum, and Mike Roday. We just had our first whiskey tasting during the break, and now let me tell you all about it as we're sipping our pick of the day during the show. It is the Porter's Crown Canadian Whiskey, 80 proof, $7.49. Now, last week we had a $60 bottle on. Yeah. Today, today we're yeah. going for the seven dollar and forty nine cent like Potter's lick, Crown Canadian whiskey. Like licking a shag carpet. Well, hang on here. Canada's smooth blend of specialty select whiskeys, each chosen to combine a, to combine a defined yet soft flavor and aroma, dominated by sweet oak fruit, honey, and spices. Yeah, those are the a great th- those are value. the whiskey power words on the resume. There, uh, it's produced by High Wood Distributors. Uh, brands are imported and bottled by Franklin Distilleries in Fairfield, California. The production location is High River, Alberta, Canada. Classification, again, is Canadian whiskey. It's aged a minimum of three years. Again, 40% alcohol by volume. And, of course, we had as America, we had to change it. So that means it's 80 proof. Price, seven forty nine. Yeah, $7.49. Yeah. $7.49. Okay. Yeah, I can really taste rotten fruit. <laughs> Can you taste that? So, so as you had your first type of deal, was did it have everything that it just talked about? Those soft flavors and aroma, the sweet oak. Did you taste any of that? No, no, no. I tasted yuck. Yeah. Well, well. Hopefully, as it breathes, I'm, I'm going to give it a thumbs up. <laughs> You're going to give it a thumbs up on what you did. Okay. Well, you know, I don't know I, if it's a thumbs up or a thumbs is, down yeah, until the end of the yeah, show. Yeah, you do. I do. Yeah, you do. I, I do. saw your face when you drank it. <laughs> well, okay. I, well, well this, you, this is this is. It's not the worst we've ever had. It's not the worst, but it's <laughs> it maybe a bottom it's a ten. Contender, <laughs> maybe bottom ten. Okay, well, so maybe it'll air out and it'll taste better. All right, well, maybe. let's continue on our segment. We're going to move from our first segment, our top five stories in the first five minutes, to our main segment today, and it is going to be all about security and companies that do not have it. Let's start our next segment now. Protect yourself today. Today on Protect Yourself Today, we're opening our first news article about a millionaire teenager over the pond in Oxford. This is a very interesting breaking story, so everybody's going to want to pay attention to this. Oxford teen accused of being multimillionaire cyber criminal. The 16-year-old, known only as White, lives with his mother in Oxford and has been accused of being one of the leaders of the cyber crime game Lapis. Lapsus. Lapsus. Yeah, we've been we've talking, talking about, about these them. guys for the last three weeks. We have. They're like the big new cyber company that came on up, or cyber cri- criminals that came on up. And guess what? This teenager is alleged to have amassed $14 million fortune from hacking, has been named by rival hackers and researchers. City of London police say they have arrested seven teenagers in relation to the gang. The boy's father told the BBC his family was concerned about him and was trying to keep him away from his computer. Under this online moniker, White or Breach Base, the teenager who has autism is said to be behind the prolific Lapis hacker crew, which is believed to be based in South America. Lapis is relatively new, but has become one of the most talked about and feared hacking criminal cyber gangs to note after successfully breaching major firms like Microsoft and bragging about it online. The city of London police said seven people between the ages 16 and 21. Just think of a 16-year-old. As a 16-year-old, I was busting dishes at the Royal Fork Buffet. I was not in the cybercrime area making $14 million. Yeah, but we just talked about 14 to 15-year-old boys having uh, less life satisfaction after watching social media. So, you know. So he decided to take that and said, I'm going to take it as a business and we'll see what we got going on. All right, they have all been under investigation, have been arrested and released to their parental consent. Their names are not been listed because they are underage at this time. 
But that is a very interesting breaking story. Nobody's talking about it, but this big cyber game that essentially has been dominating our conversations. We think I, online, on the dark web, have done some research, and I do believe that they have caught the individual that was in charge of this organization. So this this white breach base username is username a username that was is is supposedly the leader of this group. That's correct. And it's a group of teenagers. 16, 17, kids. 18, 19 year old kids. That's that's wonderful. Kid with autism that um it's very interesting because some of the posts on the dark web about this individual itself says that he was never respected and disrespected and picked on and well, yeah. and so he's gotten back in the biggest way possible to cyber break into major corporations in the United States well, and hold that, their stuff for yeah, ransom. That's not a surprise. All right. Our next story on Protect Yourself Today has us going back again to the war in Ukraine as Ukrainian telecom company's internet service was disrupted by a powerful cyber attack. We talked about this on last week's episode with Nick Espinoza. If you want to learn more about what's going on in the technology and war, please go back to episode 93 and you can learn all about it. But let's talk about what happened this week. Ukraine's state-owned telecommunications company, Ukraine Tel, experienced a disruption in internet service on Monday after a power cyber attack according to Ukrainian government officials and company representatives. The enemy launched a powerful cyber attack against Ukrainian's IT infrastructure. The attack was repelled, and now uh, Ukraine Tel has the ability to begin restoring its services to the clients. Currently, the attack has been repulsed. The provisions of services are gradually resuming, and the telecom spokesman Mikhail Surinov said that they should be up and running in the next couple of days. A similar incident took place earlier this month with a company called Trollan, a smaller Ukrainian telecom company. Forbes previously reported the company suffered a hack that resulted in some internal systems and some local subscribers losing access. Ukraine Tel has also said in a statement earlier in the day that there have been put temporary difficulties with the installation of new internet sessions for Ukrainian telecom customers. So essentially... The backstory of this is there was a breach that happened. Mm -hmm. It was a pretty aggressive breach that came, uh, we believe, from Russian sources. It's it's all indication the IPs of the servers on the attacking were coming out of Russia itself. Mm -hmm. Uh, They did breach the company. They did shut down some of the services, but they were able to clean those services, get it back up and going again. And the only really... uh, delay that they're looking and expecting to have taken care of is that the new services people that were looking to get new uh, internet service may be delayed a couple of weeks until they can come back out and set that up. All right. So it's kind of like when you get Comcast installed, they come on out, they install it. It works for the first couple hours, then they leave. It doesn't work for a while. And then, and then it or, works again. And then, and then four, six hours later, and then a couple of weeks later, all of a sudden it starts working again and, and everything is taken care of. So. Is, that, is that how it works? That is how it works with any business, Comcast. Sorry, okay. Comcast, but... Uh, You're yeah. in trouble. I will. That's all right. <laughs> um, now we're moving on to something stateside. Have you ever heard of the company called uh, Okita? Okita. No. No? No. Uh, oh, okay. No. Okay. Is it ha- Okta or Okita? Okta. Uh, I think it's Okta. Is that okay. okay. Okta. 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 We're going to go with the Okta. Hundreds of companies potentially hit by Okta hack essentially has 366 of its clients that have been breached with data that has been viewed or acted upon. Immediately upon Okta's data information, the shares fell 9% on the initial news. It says it has more than 1,500 clients from big companies, including FedEx, to smaller organizations. 1,500 or 15,000? 15,000. Okta initially said the attack in January involved a third-party contractor and a sub-processor, and the matter was investigated and contained. But it is concerned as it mounting is that Okta published a series of updated blogs posting additional information with more details. Chief Security Officer David Bradbury revealed the hackers had access to the computer at a customer support engineer's working sub-processor, and over a five-day period in mid-January, they essentially compromised their attack. The attack had been compared to walking away from your computer at a shop where a stranger would virtually come onto the machine and take ownership of the mouse and keyboard. But the engineer's computers had not been provided godlike access, so the hackers were only constrained to the information of that account itself. Okta said that it, has been bre- that it had been breached and remained fully operational. There's more corrective action that needs to be taken by our customers, Mr. Bradbury added. A third-party security contractor 
not FireEye, <laughs> said it, it was confident. I was, <laughs> I was waiting for something. Uh, said it was confident there's no longer a security risk, and it will continue to investigate and access potential security risks to both our infrastructure and to brands we support around the globe. So the more of the story is very simple, that you need to make sure that you don't leave a computer sitting around your room or a coffee shop. And that goes right into our next email that I received today. So let me just tell you, Odie, we're going to need to do a production change here. So a production change on our third segment that we're going to have uh, stories you didn't know. We're going to change that to ask the expert because I have a question that we're going to come on back and we're going to need to answer for one of our listeners. So I just got this. It says, Dear Mr. Mum and Mr. Gorday, this is from uh, P-S-T-O-F-F-O-R at gmail.com. All right. <laughs> So is that okay. pissed, pissed is, off in Oregon? <laughs> okay, at Gmail. I don't know what it means. But this weekend, it says, I had my laptop stolen, and though nothing was wrong except for to replace the laptop, on Monday I found out that all my email contacts were reached out to by this hacker asking people for money. How did they get access to my email data if I had my password on my login for my Windows 10 computer? Please help and explain. So we're going to add this to the Protect Yourself Today deal. I'm okay. going to get some well, I, research with this. I can I can answer part of that question. Okay, well, what would you do? Um, don't leave your computer where somebody <laughs> can steal it. That would probably be step number one, <laughs> okay. right? Okay, well, so here's here's what we're going to talk about. Though. I know that's a little tongue-in-cheek because yeah. I've actually had my laptop stolen a few years back and traced it to a local coffee shop. You did? Did you trace yeah. it? to? Oh, so let me ask you this. When your computer was stolen, did you have your hard drive encrypted? Oh, probably not. Probably not. I'm not that. I'm not that geeky. Okay, well, guess what? We're going to talk about, you know what you need to do if you have a laptop or a computer? I'm going to answer this person's email. All right. The first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to make sure you need to have a timeout password. Do you have a timeout password on your computer? So if you walk What's, away- What is that? So if you walk away from your computer in a, in a minute of and time- And it sleeps and then you have to re-enter the password when yep. you- no, I don't do that. You don't do that. Well, that's step number one that you should be doing to protect your well, personal correct. laptop and your and your computers. The second thing is, is you should have your hard drive encrypted because guess what can Aren't happen? Are you going to talk about that when we come back? Well, I'll talk about it when we come back. So <laughs> then we're going to talk about this. We're going to help us. We need to have our... more of this nasty whiskey. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, so the more of the story is make sure that you have your computer safe and secure. And now we're going to talk about just because your computer is safe and secure, if you don't have a couple things in place, if your computer gets stolen, you can be in some bad mojo and you can get yourself in trouble and cause other people some great harm. So we're going to talk about how to fix that. Go get your pen and pencils out. A user has this question and we're going to give you some answers so you can write this down and then you can uh, take care of it on your own PC itself also. All right. Well, we're going to take a commercial break. When we come on back, we have This Week in Technology. We'll see you right after the break. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's happening? Have you heard of Foul Play, a true crime podcast? No, Nathan. Hey, guys. Let me tell you a little bit about Foul Play. What, 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 whose voice is that, Mike? I think that's Mark Mumbles. Foul Play is one of the oldest true crime podcasts. Murder, mystery, serial killers. Oh, my. Let us take you on a journey to discover some of the most unbelievable minds of the most wicked monsters imaginable. We might even solve a few cold cases again. Now, it's hosted by crime journalist Shane L. Waters, Netflix The Keeper star Gemma Hoskins, and crime writer Wendy C. It's foulplay.com. Thanks, Mark. Foul Play, a true crime podcast. And you can find that on any of your standard podcast services. Just search for Foul Play, a true crime podcast. Hello, my name is Arthur, and my life's work is connecting people with coffee. Story Coffee is a small batch specialty coffee company that uses technology to connect people to each product resource, which allows farmers to unlock their economic freedom. Try our medium roast founder series coffee, which is an exotic bourbon variety that is smooth, fresh, and elegant at storycoffee.com. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. Today, you can get your first bag free when you subscribe at storycoffee.com with code TECHTIME. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. 
Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? Hey, do you ever feel tired, have a headache, or maybe a little bit under dehydrated? Yeah, I get told that I need to hydrate more often. Guess what, Mike? I have a solution for you. What And what is it? Hydronique Hydration. The electrolyte power drink packets are available for you now. Started in the midst of the pandemic, the founder of Hydronique Hydration, a frontline healthcare worker, started developing constant headaches. Do you know that most powdered drinks on the market have tons of sugar and caffeine, especially those rock star and Gatorade substitutes? Yeah, like you drink. So I'm going to need to change. So what did the founder do? Well, that's why he created Hydronique Hydration, sugar-free, keto-friendly, plant-based, antioxidant-rich, electrolyte powdered packets for daily use containing all the essential vitamins and minerals with a refreshing taste their product contains elderberry elderberry which has immune boosting properties for supporting during cold and flu season hydronique hydration electrolyte powder packets can also fit in your bag or suitcase when traveling your busy days in 2022 can change do you want a sugar-free keto-friendly vitamin drink to give you hydration boosts if so Give Hydronique Hydration a try. You can visit the website at www.hydroniquehydration. It's www.hydroniquehydration.com. hydration.com. That's the word hydration and unique mashed together. Or you can search for Hydronique Hydration on Amazon.com or on their own website at hydroniquehydration.com. And now, let's look back at this week in technology. March 29th, 1983, the TRS-80 Model 100 is introduced by Radio Shack. Yeah, the Trash 80. That's right. Radio Shack introduces the TRS-80 Model 100, one of the first portable computers in a notebook-style form factor. It's one of the first notebook-style computers featuring a keyboard and a liquid crystal display and a battery-powered package roughly the size the shape of a notebook or a large book. The Model 100 was promoted as being able to run up to 20 hours and maintain memory up to 30 days on a set of four alkaline AA batteries. That, that seems a little out there. Uh, <laughs> all right. Originally made by Coursera and sold in Japan was a slow seller, and Coursera decided to sell the rights to a company called Tandy Corporation. The computer was sold through Radio Shack stores in the United States and Canada and affiliated dealers and all over the country and became the company's most popular model with over 6 million units sold worldwide. Nice. The portability, simplicity, and built-in modem of the Model 100 made it very popular for journalists who could write stories in the field and transmit it back to their office. You can pick up the original price of one of these models was $1,500, but today on eBay, you can get one for $49 to $89, and most of the offers on eBay... Come with the original soft cover carrying case. Nice. Get yours today. All right. Well, that's our This Week in Technology. If you ever wanted to watch some technology tech time history, well, we have over two years of videos, and you can visit techtimeradio.com to watch all of our older shows. Or sign up for our newsletter to subscribe to the best technical information from Mike and myself, along with some inspirational quotes and information regarding psychology. Or you can join our Tech Timers Facebook group to talk with us live all the time. We're going to take a commercial break. When we return, we have a new segment that we're going to be changing to. So we're going to be changing to that Ask the Expert, and we're going to answer a caller's email to help them with their computer. We'll see you right after the commercial break. Hey, Mike, did you know that Unidragon puzzles are a great relaxation? Yes, I did. The 21st century widespread digitalization pushes people to have gadget-free rest. In this case, puzzles become a convenient and actual way of having rest. Yeah, they're a great way to relax. To give your brain a reboot. Is make sure that you visit Unidragon.com with the discount code for 10% off with the code TIME10. That's T-I-M-E, the number 10, for all of our Tech Time fans across the nation. Do you know that puzzles are relatively simple tools that solve a complex range of problems? In game form, we learn useful, analytical, and communicative skills that will find the application in work, study, and other spheres of life. Yeah, they are great forms of relaxation and revitalization. 
Do you know that Unit Dragons collections now have dinosaurs? Oh, that's my that's that's one of my favorite things. You got to make sure you keep the promo code. It's Time Ten because all of our audience across the nation can use Time Ten to receive a ten percent discount at Unit Dragon. That's Unidragon.com. Don't be fooled by other imitation puzzle makers. Visit Unidragon.com, the only spot for your true thinking puzzles. This is a segment we call Ask the Experts. All right. We're going to get right into the Ask the Experts. But before that, we're going to talk about the whiskey here real quick as we come on back. I got some Mark's Mumbles. (laughs) Um, During the break, you tasted it. Now, this is what Mark said about this whiskey. Okay. For those of you that like Canadian whiskey, it tastes just as bad as Crown Royal, (laughs) and it's one-fourth the cost. So go for it. That's what Mark (laughs) says. Now, Mark is also quoted as saying... I'm struggling to mumble anything about the selection of whiskeys that Nathan has chosen lately, specifically the ones that are the bottom shelf, so low that they're embarrassing to true, decent bottom shelf whiskeys. He is going to actually come and visit our show next week to share a glass of good whiskey with both myself and Mike and bring some bottles for future shows so Mike does not have to continue suffering from Nathan's poor selection of our whiskeys. Thank you, Mark. So Mark is going to join us on the show. We thank our, our, he, he's a part of our production crew. Mm-hmm. He is, he lives in uh, Oregon. I don't know if he's the person that sent up this email. I don't think, I don't think that's the person that sent this email, but essentially he'll be joining us next week and we'll have some great whiskeys. So let's, uh, l- let's go and talk about this a little bit. This email again, for those that may not have heard, I'm going to read the email. It says essentially this weekend I had my laptop stolen. And there was nothing wrong except for to replace the laptop. So essentially, he had a laptop. It, I think it was in a public area, or maybe somebody did a bash and grab in, That's in what his happened car. To me. Somebody, okay, somebody broke into my house and stole stole your laptop. Stole my yeah, my laptop and some other collectibles and things. Okay, so essentially, laptop stolen. He thinks the worst of it is that he has to go and buy a new laptop, configure it, and that takes a bunch of time to do just within the self of restarting the OS, reloading your application. Mm-hmm. That, that's, yeah, that's, that's time and a half to do that nowadays with, with everything that you need to do. It's a horrible feeling. It is, because you start, although you start clean and you feel good about it and your machine normally runs a lot quicker and then all of a sudden you load all the same crap up and then it's slow again. But he found out later that all of the email contacts that he had were reached out to by the hacker asking people for money. He doesn't understand what happened. So what this is probably, I'm going to make the... Uh, the guess, the reach of this. The but assumption? It, yeah, the assumption of, of what happened here. But essentially, the laptop probably had a hard disk that was in there. Mm. The hard disk was physically taken out of the machine that he had, and it was put into another machine that's running and attached as a secondary hard drive. When you do that, unless you have your hard drive encrypted, what happens is all that information on your hard drive becomes available on the new computer. So if I'm a hacker or if I'm someone that steals something... I can take the data out of that hard drive, and then I can open up email. I can get your contact list. I can go through financial records, and it's just all that data well, that's on the drive awesome itself. Well, that's awesome to know. Yeah, so any, any laptop you have at any time, the chances of them opening up the hard drive, okay. taking it out, and getting it can get your personal information. So, Nathan. Yes? How do I encrypt my hard drive? Well, there's two things that you should do. First off, what we want to do is we want to make sure that you have a lock setting. So that means when you walk away from your computer or when you boot up your computer, if you leave it in an open work environment, if let's say you're at a coffee shop, okay? Mm-hmm. What you want to do is when you get up from that computer, you want to make sure your computer is locked. So somebody just can't overlook in your email, see what's going on, immediately take access to your computer. You can have a Wi-Fi sniffing device or something. So you got to make sure your computer locks. And you can have it lock anywhere between immediately, within like a second after you're no longer there, to five seconds, to 10 seconds, to a minute. You know what? If you do a minute timeout, that's pretty good if you're in some common areas. So you get up, you got a minute to go, and boom, you're you're ready to have your computer locked. Or you could just lock it manually. You can lock it manually. Yeah. So we're going to talk about that. Or you could just not leave it while you leave. <laughs> just not leave it there while you go to the bathroom. Somehow, I guess else. all our audience and all of the people, I, I go all the time to Starbucks. I, and I can literally I know, sit there, I, and I could collect five laptops in I know, five minutes. I know. Jet I, out, and I would have myself a collection I of laptops. I think it's absolutely crazy. It is because I never, I never do that. I, if I take my laptop with me to a coffee shop, I, I will take it to the bathroom with me. Okay, so let's say you have a Windows PC. Mm-hmm. Do you know how you can get up? What key combination you can do to lock your computer? 
If you hit the no. Windows key and L, the Windows key and L, you got your computer over there? Yeah. yeah. Hit the Windows key and L. See what happens. Boom. All of a sudden, your computer is locked. The Windows logo key and L will automatically lock your PC. You see that? Yeah. Okay. So anytime you get up, if you have a Windows PC, hit the Windows key and L. Or you can go into Windows 10 or Windows 11, go to the Start menu, then go to Control Panel, which is the gear icon, click on Personalization, then Lock Screen, and choose a timeout setting so when you get up from your machine, it will automatically time out. So let's talk about that again. You go to Windows 10, click the Start menu, hit the Control Panel gear icon, click the Personalization, and then click the Lock Screen to set up a Lock Screen timer so it does the but same thing. Does this, as, does this work? With removing the hard it does. drive? This is the first thing you should do. Okay. Though. This is the first thing. Now, let me, what happens if you have an Apple machine? Is that what you said, Mike? No, I didn't say that. Okay, but... thank you for saying that. <laughs> Fantastic. So if you have an Apple like machine, um, you hit Control, Command, and Q. Control, man, Apple Command, Apple has to be like completely more... Well, this is they pretty got easy. three keys. Well, you know, like two keys instead of three. Come now, on. you can go on in if you go into Apple menu, which is the Apple in the top, top left-hand corner. And if you choose System Preferences, you click Desktop and Screen Saver. You click your Screen Saver, and then you can choose anywhere between 15 minutes or less. It will go into your System Preferences, and then you click on Security. It will ask you for a password to wake up your computer. So let's talk about that again. Apple Menu, System Preference. Click on Desktop and Screen Saver. Slide your bar across. Then go back to System Preference window. Click Security. And then put in a password so you're required to have that password when you wake up your computer. Yeah, to get all that? That's a little bit more complicated than Windows, all right? <laughs> oh, yeah. But here we go. Now, let's talk about the hard drive. Yeah, let's let's talk about that. So the hard drive, unless you encrypt your hard drive, I can plug that into any other machine, grab your data off it, and boom. I got information forever. I have done this as testing where I've taken recycled PCs from people opened up the hard drives, plugged them in, and got so much confidential data off of that that I was like, this is crazy. Well, How you have your taxes, you have your loans, you your 401k, there. Excel spreadsheets, you can do all of that. So here's what you need to do. You need to encrypt your hard drive. Everybody listening right now, if your hard drive is not encrypted, take out a pen and pencil. We're going to talk about the Windows machine first. In your search field on the taskbar, you see your search field at the very bottom there? Yep. You're going to type in the word BitLocker, B I T. L O C K E R. And then it, once you type that in, it's going to come on up with a little icon for BitLocker. You hit enter and you go into the app itself. So you, you got device encryption settings. Yep, that would be device encryption. Next, the drive you want to encrypt, encrypt you can click on turn on BitLocker. It's very simple. So it says drive you want to, to encrypt, you turn on BitLocker. Select the way to unlock the drive at the system startups. So this is important. So you either are going to choose to enter a password. Yeah, mine's on. Or, well, I, I set it up for you. Oh, you did? I did when you first got your machine, yeah. Oh. So, so, so you're good to go. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, click on turn on. You can either choose to have a password or you can insert a USB flash drive that will use your encrypted password. Create a password, but keep in mind that it needs to be strong, reliable, and something you don't forget because if you forget your password for your encryption, it'll be gone forever. I don't know what my password yes, is. I, I sent it to you in email. I'll, I'll, go, okay. I'll have to go and look at it. All memory. right. So now there's going to ask you a couple of questions. You can choose to encrypt the entire disk or just limited space. I don't know why you would do limited space. Just encrypt your whole hard drive. You don't want to have a section that's unencrypted and a section that's not because that, if you're spending that much time organizing but your encrypted data. Wouldn't, I want it, wouldn't that be great to have a, a piece of my hard drive that's unencrypted so whoever hacks it gets like a Nedry thing? Uh-uh-uh. Oh, you're going to do the Say Jurassic the Park a, a uh, video? That would be kind of yeah, fun to that do would that. be kind of fun. But if you're going to spend that much time doing it, then you got got a lot of time on your hands. So essentially, choose your entire disk. Select the most suitable encryption mode. It'll ask you, do you want to be Windows 10 compliant or before? Uh, enable BitLocker to run the system, and boom, it will take a while to run. So you got to let it sit back. It'll encrypt it. By the next time your system restarts, your drive is encrypted, and then you don't have to worry about someone stealing your hard drive. Now awesome. let's talk about the Mac version. The Mac... Now, here's what I got. To protect your files from hackers and thieves, Macs offer excellent encryption, even better than Windows. And this is actually true. You can encrypt your entire hard drive, encrypt an external drive, or just create an encrypted container for the most important files. Mm -hmm. But just encrypt your whole hard drive. All you got to do is hold FileVault features, which allows you to encrypt your 
whole Mac by choosing this solution. You enable File Vault by clicking the Apple icon on the menu at the top of your screen. Select Preferences and then click on the Security and Privacy icon and click on Turn on File Vault option. This will enable you to configure File Vault. By default, it'll ask you for your Apple ID. So if you have an Apple ID for all your Apple products, you can use that. That way, if you forget your password, you can always go back in through your Apple ID. Absolutely, you should take care of it. But if you're oversensitive that someone will hack your Apple ID and then also be the same thieves that steal your laptop to log into it, you can put in your own password if you want to. But the simplest way is to put your ID in there. All right. Once you've configured it, make sure you have plenty of time because your Mac may have to open up and run overnight. All right. There you go. That was our segment there. Hopefully that gave some information to P-S-T-O-F-F-O-R at gmail.com. Hopefully next time you will encrypt your Windows 10 machine so you don't have to worry about having emails be sent out to your contacts asking for money. All right. We are just moments away from our Mike's Mesmerizing Moment. We'll see you after this commercial break. How to See a Man About a Dog. It combines darkly comic short stories, powerful poems, and pulp fiction prose to create a heartbreaking and hilarious journey readers will not soon forget. Read How to See a Man About a Dog, Collected Writings, for free with Kindle Unlimited. Ebook available on Kindle, print copies available on Amazon the Book Depository, and more. This is Mike's Mesmerizing Moment, presented by Story Coffee. Visit storycoffee.com. I'm mesmerized. All right, Mike, 0 to 60. What happens? What produces somebody to go from 0 to 60, come up on a stage and slap somebody? Okay, so you're you're obviously referring to the recent uh, debacle at the Oscars, yes? Uh, that's with that, yeah, absolutely. That's so, what I'm looking at. Interestingly enough, I wrote about this today. I haven't I have been I haven't posted anything on any social media for a long time. Okay. And today I posted on this very thing. Uh, what I, what I sort of did is this is a, a prime example of what's called reaction formation. Okay. Okay. So reaction formation is a self, a psychological self-defense mechanism where an impulse or behavior that is unwanted or inappropriate is replaced by the opposite impulse or behavior. Okay. Okay. So are you tracking with me? Yep. So what what we're looking at here is that because because there's a lot of confusion there's a lot of people that are talking about this particular thing that happened right where Will Smith slapped Chris Rock on stage okay and the confusion is like why was he laughing and then suddenly he's slapping Chris Rock right yep and you, so your question sort of goes goes on so so I just kind of pictured that you're in this audience and and you're you're sitting with all these people and everybody's laughing at the jokes that Chris Rock. Now, assuming that this is not a a staged event, which some people think it is, uh, he makes a crack about your wife. Yep. And you're laughing because everybody's laughing, and that's kind of a normal thing. And then you look over and you see the look on her face, and you suddenly realize you are participating in the humiliation of your own wife. Okay. What happens? you suddenly feel probably pretty guilty. Okay. And that causes a lot of pain inside, and immediately we want to shut that off. Okay. So what, what's, a good, what's a good response? You get angry. And what happens in a reaction formation is often the reaction, the opposite reaction is very exaggerated. So instead of getting angry and apologizing to his wife, he feels like he needs to do something to satisfy all this pain and guilt. So he gets up and does this really exaggerated thing, walks up on stage and smacks Chris okay. in the face. Okay. Now, I can't say for certain that this is exactly what happened because I'm not, I wasn't there. I don't know the relationship between him and Chris Rock and Jada. So I don't know anything about the dynamics there. But as a as an example, we can see this as a reaction formation. So uh, this it looks like an attempt on his part to satisfy the the need to get rid of that pain of embarrassing his wife and hurting her more by participating in this humiliating sort of event. Okay, so that's why. I, so that's kind of that trigger to that one to sixty. Yeah, yeah, we do it. We we all do it. Just make sure that you understand that we all have these self-defense mechanisms, and we all do this. So this can happen to anybody. I'm not excusing the behavior at all. I'm just saying that this might be what had happened. 
All right. Well, now I think it's time to do our pick of the day here, Mr. Gorday. We have our Porter's Crown Canadian Whiskey. <laughs> All right. This yes. is uh, 80 proof, $7.49 a bottle. Are you going to give this a thumbs up, a thumbs down? What, what's you know, your the, the smooth blend of specially selected whiskey that has that has all these fruity, weird tastes. Soft vanilla, then sweet oak, fruit, honey, it, and spices. And ends with a very long aftertaste of uh, paint thinner. Yeah. I'm going to give it a thumbs down. <laughs> thumbs down. This all is right. the nastiest. Odie, what did you think I of think, this? I think this is okay. worse than Canadian Mist. I am going to give it a thumbs up. Okay. I don't know why, but I just liked it. You liked it? She liked it. She gave it a thumbs up. Like the... The ending was bad, but the I still event, But it. the middle is okay. So it's kind of like a, it's like a lot of Hollywood films. The movie is good and bad. Oh, here we go. All right, I'm going to give a thumbs down also. Why are you giving it a thumbs uh, it's, down? It's, it's just horrible. nasty, isn't it? All right. Remember, thank you for joining us. The science of tomorrow starts with the technology today. Thank you for joining our show. Us on Bye-bye. Tech Time Radio. We hope that you had a chance to have that hmm moment today in technology. The fun doesn't stop there. We recommend that you go to techtimeradio.com and join our fan list for the most important aspect of staying connected and winning some really great monthly prizes. We also have a few other ways to stay connected, including subscribing to our podcast on any podcast service from Apple to Google and everything in between. We're also on YouTube. So check us out on youtube.com slash techtimeradio, all one word. We hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did making it for you. From all of us at Tech Time Radio, remember, mum's the word. Have a safe and fantastic week.